It's unimaginable what people experiencing homelessness must be feeling right at this time. The homeless people that we're seeing are struggling with the effects of the traumas that they've been through. You could come from any sort of aspect of life and still experience homelessness. That can be from family breakdown, it could be from DV, it could be from loss of um, employment, which we're going to see a lot more of with the fires impacting and then on top of that COVID and all the loss of all those jobs. Since I've been redundant from my apprenticeship, I've been with temporary accommodation. Um, I was working at Eden as an apprentice mechanic and that was just on two years ago now. I was sleeping in my car for a, a couple of weeks, close to a month before they could even find temporary accommodation. And even then there was next to nothing down here from caravan parks to share houses. And you don't know what's gonna happen in the next two, three months. I've been let off from my work at Mitre 10. They said for the foreseeable future. Well, how long is that? Like, you know, I'm staying in a caravan that's $200 a week, like that's 400 bucks a fortnight. And to me, that's not even worth that. You can't live in a house on Centrelink. You can't survive on Centrelink. You literally can't. People are going to have significant mental health issues because there is just not enough houses to go around, but it's going to get worse. And if we don't get some houses now, we're in for a different type of pandemic. Um, and that's like a housing shortage pandemic. This is my seventh time I've moved in the two years now, trying to find somewhere with with my little dog, Ruby. It's almost impossible to find somewhere to live because I've got a little dog, even though she's very important to me, my mental health in particular. So there's some days I wake up and I'm not sure where I am. And I'm trying to think, oh, I'm still in that place and I'm not. It'd be nice one day when I, I, can, I can feel um, secure and know that I, I'm not going to be raced on soon, you know. This is their home, this is where their children go to school, this is where they were working, this is where their life is, this is where they've chose to live. So we can't just move them away and I think that's a big thing that needs to be um, identified is living in country is so different from the city. People will sleep in the bush, they know where to hide. Um, it's not as visible as uh, Sydney. There's also the invisible homeless where people are sleeping, sofa surfing. They're not just single people either. They've got children and babies, you know, partners that are trying to maintain work. Um, and they're living in a caravan on somebody else's land. They're the new homeless. This is a sort of a thriving holiday destination where it's supposed to be all rosy and fun and beach and and I suppose that doesn't paint the picture of homelessness doesn't actually fit into a rural situation sometimes that's really focused on tourism. I just think that we need to continue to give a voice to the voiceless. We need to actually provide that opportunity and listen to what people have to say, what their needs are, not have a bunch of services tell them what they need, but actually talk to them and say, what are your needs? The government and the people that run this sort of stuff, they really need to look at in how to make it move just that little bit quicker, because yeah, it's, it's, you know, one night being on the streets could change your life forever.